Hello and welcome to Dove Biology Apes Lessons to Go. In this video, we'll be discussing wastewater treatment. Wastewater is any water that has been adversely affected in quality by human use. Sewage would be a subset of wastewater that would be contaminated with either feces or urine. We oftentimes refer to this as brown water. Now, water from washing machines, sinks, and tubs is also considered wastewater, but because it doesn't have any biological contaminants, it's considered separate from just raw sewage. It's oftentimes itself referred to as gray water. Now, if we simply release untreated wastewater into our uh, surface water areas, we are adding uh, pollutants to that water. These are biological contaminants, which will increase the biological oxygen demand on systems and really damage our aquatic ecosystems. A great current example is uh, the water surrounding uh, Rio, uh, the future site of the Summer Olympics. As a result of the excess nutrients coming from uh, raw, untreated sewage, the waters are neon green, uh, evidence of high eutrophication. The average fecal pollution rate is about 78 times that of the Brazilian government's satisfactory limit and 195 times the level considered safe by the U.S. 70% of Rio sewage goes untreated. In this image, we can actually see a... Uh, a plume of raw sewage that is uh, found in uh, Rio's Guanabara Bay. Unless Brazil makes some headway in clearing up its waters, experts warn that the Summer Games could pose health risks to athletes and mar what uh, officials hope will be their global showcase event. Now, the idea of wastewater treatment is that we're going to take human industrial liquid wastes and make them safe enough from the public health perspective to return to the aquatic or terrestrial environment. Now there's two basic types of wastewater treatment uh, that we'll talk about. We have our septic tanks which typically treat small volumes of wastewater like from a single home or a small commercial or industrial endeavor. Whereas our other type is going to be our wastewater treatment plants, which are actually going to treat larger volumes of municipal or industrial waste. So let's first take a look at a septic system. In your house, when you flush a toilet or turn on a sink, the stuff that goes down the drain is going to enter into a settling tank. Here, grease and oil, because they're less dense, are going to rise to the top and solids will fall to the bottom and will be decomposed by bacteria. The wastewater uh, then is connected to a pipe which then will release that into a distribution box which is connected to a series of pipes that have holes in them, perforated pipes and then those pipes are surrounded by gravel or crushed stone. This area is called our drain field. The water that moves into the drain field will then percolate through the soil. It will leave through those little holes in the pipes and enter into the soil so that the soil and then the soil bacteria can then further uh, filter that waste water. Not all land areas are able to have septic systems. The soil must be well drained. You have to have enough volume of land to allow for a large enough drain field. Uh, the elevation has to be such that the water will move and not settle as it percolates through the ground. As you're using your septic system, eventually it's going to need to be pumped out about every 10 to 15 years, depending upon the number of users in a home. Then the solid material will then be taken to a sewage treatment facility for further disposal. If you don't maintain your septic system, it could actually back up, causing raw sewage to come into the home, or it could actually percolate up out of uh, the ground and uh, pollute other homes or nearby water supplies. In most developed countries, most waterborne waste will actually flow through pipes to wastewater treatment plants where the water will undergo several different levels of treatment before the water is released back into the environment. The first stage for most uh, wastewater treatment is what we call primary sewage treatment. Primary sewage treatment is a physical process that will use screens and a grit tank to remove large floating objects and allow for the solid material to begin to settle out and separate from the liquid material. This is done in what's known as a primary settling tank. 
The solid material, now referred to as primary effluent, will enter into a secondary sewage treatment. This is a biological process in which aerobic bacteria are going to remove as much as 90% of the dissolved and biodegradable oxygen demanding wastes. This is done by pumping oxygen, by aerating uh, the solid material and allowing for the, bio for the bacteria to do the biology, to actually decompose that uh, organic waste. The liquid waste that then is recovered from this process is going to first be chlorinated to remove coloration and to kill disease carrying bacteria. And sometimes it's also hit with ultraviolet light as an additional disinfectant before it's released into a surrounding body of water. The water that leaves a wastewater treatment facility as secondary effluent is actually cleaner than the water that it is entering into in that stream or body of water. We still, though, we consider that water non-potable. It's not going to be drinkable until um, it's had a chance to kind of go back into the environment. Um, in some areas, uh, they have opportunities for uh, landscaping companies and other corporations to come and uh, collect that water, either for free or for a small fee, uh, for use in their businesses. Now, some facilities actually have a tertiary treatment that takes place on that uh, effluent before it's released into the environment. This is called tertiary treatment. Here, we're going to use a series of chemical and physical processes to remove more specific pollutants. In particular, we might be removing nitrates and phosphates, which of course are those plant nutrients. If those are released into waters, they can cause local eutrophication or eutrophication of waterways that are part of the watershed. The Chesapeake Bay, because of the high levels of nitrogen and phosphate that it receives, uh, experiences great amounts of eutrophication. And so, using the Clean Water Act, tax dollars are being used to upgrade a lot of uh, major wastewater facilities um, within its watershed to help remove those nitrates and phosphates. Um, tertiary treatment is expensive, and it's usually only found in newer or updated facilities. Now, the solid sewage sludge will be further digested anaerobically, and then it will be dried. This dried sludge oftentimes referred to as a biosolid, can be removed and disposed of in a landfill, or it could actually be applied on a farm. When treated and processed, sewage sludge becomes that biosolid, which can be safely recycled and then applied as a fertilizer to sustainably improve and maintain productive soils and stimulate plant growth. Now, only biosolids that meet the most stringent standards spelled out by the federal and state rules can be approved as use as a fertilizer. Wastewater treatment facilities in the United States will generate over 7 million dry tons of sludge every year. Another byproduct of wastewater treatment that could be utilized to increase the sustainability of the process and allow for additional reuse and recycling is methane gas or biogas, which is a byproduct of the anaerobic digestion of human waste. Large scale waste facilities could harvest this gas and then use it to produce electricity. Or it could even be compressed and then used in converted automobiles. It only takes 70 homes worth of solid waste to drive this converted Volkswagen Beetle 10,000 miles a year with a fuel efficiency of 5.3 miles per cubic meter of biogas. There are several different strategies which we could employ which would improve upon our wastewater treatment to allow for it to be much more sustainable. One example would be switching from conventional toilets to waterless composting toilets. These composting toilets will uh, mimic natural chemical cycling. Um, they're cheaper to install and maintain. They save on water because you're not using water to flush. And it saves on energy. Another way to improve on our wastewater treatment is instead of using um, artificial lagoons and uh, aerating uh, systems of a traditional wastewater treatment facility, we can actually uh, co-opt natural or build artificial wetlands to use them as a much more um, efficient system of sewage treatment. 
um, our sewage material will enter into um, a wastewater pond where it can be aerated allowing for anaerobic and aerobic digestion of waste. So the, uh, the soil microbes are going to digest the organics. The liquid, the water that moves through the ground will enter into a second pond where algae and things will continue to digest organics. And then uh, the water will then move out through more soil, which is going to be filtering that um, pollutant even further. And then the water will eventually make its way into a, uh, a final waterway where we're going to consider it clean or safe for the environment. California actually created uh, a 65 hectare wetland near Humboldt Bay to do just that. It uh, is a wastewater treatment plant that actually uh, is able to treat the town of 16,000 people. Another way that we could improve our wastewater management is by collecting, filtering, and reusing our gray water for additional purposes. This way, we actually reduce the amount of water that we're using and the amount of wastewater that we're producing. Every day, humans impact the quality of water that we utilize. That water that we use needs to be treated before it's released back into the environment so that it doesn't cause ecological harm. We need to evaluate the amount of water that we use and how we treat our water so that we can make sure that the water quality that's present in the environment is of the highest levels.